Hello, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I'm so happy to see you again in the series of management accounting. The topic today is about job costing. There will be two videos about job costing. The first one is uh, about the accumulation of job uh, costing, okay, and also the concept, of course. And the second part will be about the spoilage, rework, and a uh, scrap related to the job costing. These are the learning objectives of our uh, topic today. The first one is to describe concept of costing system. The second one is to distinguish job costing from process costing. The third is to describe the, the approaches to evaluating and implementing job costing system. Then we also describe the concept of normal costing and actual costing. Uh, we will continue with uh, the check of the flow of cost in a job costing system and the disposal of under and over uh, allocated manufacturing overhead cost. Of course, in the last part, we will also uh, have exercises to make sure that we understand how to do all of the calculations related to the job costing. Let's recall the basic terminology that we ha or, uh, already have uh, previously. Uh, the first one is cost object. It's anything for which a cost measure is desired. So it can be a product, can be um, a service or a division maybe. Okay. Uh, the second one is direct cost. Direct cost is a, a cost object uh, or cost that can be traced to that cost object in an economically feasible way. And while the indirect cost, uh, the cost object are costs that cannot be traced. So we have to allocate the indirect cost to the job based on the uh, allocation base. The, the next is the cost pool. Cost pool is a grouping of individual indirect cost items. Cost pool simplifies the allocation of indirect cost because the costing system does not have to allocate each cost. While we know that there are so many indirect costs and uh, uh, they have a different uh, cost driver, so we have to uh, classify them into pools so we can then uh, find what is the appropriate uh, cost driver to each pool, then we can use that the cost driver to allocate the indirect cost uh, more accurately to the cost object. Okay. And of course, we also uh, know the cost allocation base or sometimes called cost driver. It is a systematic way to link an indirect cost or group of indirect cost to cost object. Uh, we have uh, two, cost, two kinds of uh, costing systems, job costing and process, process costing. Job costing uh, um, can trace the uh, cost object yeah, in a unit or multiply units of a distinct product or service which call a job. So um, job costing is finding uh, or calculating the cost to each job and each job is uh, different from other jobs because jobs are heterogeneous so <coughs> each job will have different uh, kind of uh, cost function so we have to calculate them separately to each other. And here are some examples of the job costing, like the consulting, law consulting, project contract, uh, paintings, inter interior design, uh, luxury, bridal, fashionable clothes, and so on. So everything that needs uh, a special or a custom uh, uh, calculation of costs, so we have to use the cost, uh, job costing. While process costing uh, is used for the product that is masses and identical or similar or homogeneous. So uh, what we have to do is just to find all of the total production cost and then we divide it with the number of units we are producing. The example of the, uh, of the process costing is the food and beverage, regular t-shirt, postal delivery or everything that uh, uh, is homogeneous can be uh, calculated using the process costing.
and we can also approach uh, the costing using actual costing or normal costing actual costing is uh, calculating cost based on the actual cost incurred by the, uh, while the normal costing uh, is co uh, calculated using the budgeted or estimated rate so we uh, previously in advance uh, calculate the rate for a particular cost per unit and then we calculate that cost per unit the predetermined uh, cost per unit with the actual cost allocation base or actual activities uh, done in the particular period for the direct cost uh, actual costing and normal costing are using the same way so we use the actual rate uh, multiplied by the, by the actual activities or actual uh, direct cost inputs or uh, actual cost driver so uh, both of them use the same calculation process but for the indirect cost the difference between the actual and the normal costing is that the normal costing are using predetermined or budgeted indirect cost rate so what we, are, we have to do is we, we uh, in advance before the uh, period uh, start we have to make the estimation of the rate of indirect cost per unit okay and when we calculate uh, in the current period we multiply it with the actual quantities of cost allocation basis so uh, we use the actual cost driver activities done in a particular period while for the actual costing uh, we multiply the actual indirect cost rates so uh, we use the actual rates not the predetermined or budgeted rates okay so we can uh, summarize that for the direct material and direct labor uh, we can directly trace the cost to the jobs but for the indirect cost uh, or manufacturing overhead we have to allocate them we have to allocate them to jobs yeah, using the allocation base or the cost driver okay there are seven steps in doing job costing the first one is of course we have to identify the job that is the chosen cost object and then we identify the direct cost of the job and then we can accumulate them directly and then for the indirect cost we select the cost allocation base or the cost driver for indirect cost allocation and then we identify the indirect cost associated with each cost allocation base and then uh, after these two uh, activities we uh, find the rate per unit of each cost allocation base and after that we multiply the uh, budgeted allocation rate with the actual base activity for each job then we can then find the indirect cost allocated to the job and finally we add up the direct cost and indirect cost to get job cost uh, job cost uh, in total okay we can uh, summarize it as this way so direct total cost object is direct material direct labor plus the indirect cost yeah, so the total is the manufacturing cost for a particular job okay let's see now the flow of cost in a job costing system uh, the first uh, activity is usually is we purchase materials okay uh, let's say in this example we purchase 89,000 and then we use 85,000 from the 85,000 we use 81,000 as a direct material so we have to put them into the working process control while 4000 of them will go to manufacturing overhead as an indirect that, uh, uh, materials and from the cash control for example we find here that 54000 uh, is for the payroll for the wages yeah for of labors so um, we assume that in uh, in this example from the 54,000 39,000 is uh, to pay direct labor so we put it or we sign it to the working process control 
and 15,000 of them is uh, to pay uh, um, uh, indirect labor so we put it in the manufacturing overhead control yeah overhead control means this is the actual manufacturing overhead and 75,000 is the example of the actual manufacturing overhead yeah uh, example of the uh, uh, um, other manufacturing overhead is the depreciation, for example, or uh, utilities costs. Yeah, so we um, uh, might put them in the manufacturing overhead control. Okay, beside the manufacturing overhead control, uh, using the actual budget, uh, actual costing, we also have to calculate the manufacturing overhead allocated or in other words this is the budgeted manufacturing overhead or in other words we use the normal costing so 80,000 here is the uh, budgeted uh, unit cost yeah budgeted uh, unit cost of overhead uh, multiplied by the actual activities as what we had before okay and then the one that we to us that we assign to the working process uh, working process control is the budgeted manufacturing overhead not the actual manufacturing overhead so we take it from the manufacturing overhead allocated so again uh, please uh, bear in your mind that control means uh, this is the actual cost incurred and allocated means it is the budgeted or the normal costing yeah but the one that we assign to the working process is the budgeted overhead not the actual overhead okay and let's say now from all the costs uh, accumulated in the working process uh, 188,800 in this case let's say is finished so we then assign it to the uh, finished good and the rest will stay in the ending inventory or the working process and after we have the finished good let's say some of them are sold so we can then sign it to the cost of good sold and the rest will stay in the finished good inventory and for the uh, cost of good sold then we also uh, find the revenues marketing expenses customer service expenses and other expenses and all of that will go to the income statement okay so let's now see uh, how to make the journal entry for all the transactions yeah the first one is for the purchase of the material when we purchase material uh, as before as usual we uh, debit it to material control and credit accounts payable control so again this is the actual materials purchased The second journal is about the usage of the direct and indirect material. For the direct material, we sign it to the working process control, while indirect material is signed to uh, ma manufacturing overhead control. Yeah. So again, this is the actual manufacturing overhead cost, and for the working process is the actual direct material and for the direct labor the same case for the direct labor we sign to the working process control while the manufacturing overhead is signed to uh, manufacturing overhead control yeah credit is the cash control because usually uh, uh, direct labor is paid using cash uh, next is the uh, is the journal for the um, other overhead uh, costs and allocation overhead costs okay uh, for the other manufacturing overhead we make the journal entry to the uh, manufacturing overhead control and uh, uh, credit is a uh, 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 credit depends on the what kind of the uh, overhead that we are using for the cash control is the cost that we pay and other like uh, accumulated depreciation so we uh, credit it to the accumulated depreciation okay and uh, for the allocation overhead yeah we sign to the uh, working process yeah 
so we credit the manufacturing overhead allocated yeah so please bear in mind that for the working process we use this uh, uh, direct labor sorry direct material direct labor and budgeted overhead not the actual overhead okay okay and for the journal entry for the uh, uh, finished good when we uh, finish processing the working process and it goes to the finished good so we debit the finished good and credit working process control when it is uh, sold then we have to transfer the uh, finished good to the cost of good sold so we debit cost of good sold and credit finished good control and for the other operational uh, costs, yeah, we uh, made the journal entry based on or according to the uh, expenses that we spent for the marketing expenses, customer service expenses, or other expenses. Okay, yeah. and then uh, as we uh, have before, uh, cost, uh, sorry, manufacturing overhead control or the actual manufacturing overhead cost may be different from the uh, budgeted uh, or allocated manufacturing overhead. Yeah, so it means that there is uh, uh, an under of uh, allocated or under applied or over allocated or over applied. If we allocate more than the actual cost incurred. So there will be an over allocation or over applied of the overhead cost. Yeah. So if uh, there are two methods to uh, treat this uh, over applied or under applied. Uh, the first one is write off method. Write off method means we write off or we dispose the under allocation or over allocation directly to the cost of wood sort. Yeah. So uh, we previously put the material overhead, uh, manufacturing overhead allocated in credit and we debit the manufacturing overhead control. So we have to uh, write them all yeah, off. So we write off them. So uh, we debit manufacturing allocated, uh, manufacturing overhead control is credit and then different will go to the cost of goods sold. If we allocate uh, more than the actual uh, cost means, um, as we know before that the uh, cost allocated will go to the working process and then it will go to the finished good, then go to the uh, cost of goods sold and finally it will influence the uh, income. Yeah? So it means that if we allocate more than the actual cost incurred it means that our cost of good salt will be too high because the cost of good salt is too high so we have to deduct our cost of good salt for the difference amount that we have that we assign the second method is using proration method uh, the difference between a proration method and write-off method is just for the cost of good salt we divide the cost into all the ending inventory we have yeah. Uh, we write off uh, to the cost of goods sold directly usually because uh, we um, consider that the difference between allocate, uh, uh, allocated or the budgeted and the actual amount is not material so it will not materially influence our income so we just assign all the cost to the cost of goods sold yeah, like in this case, uh, it is the over uh, allocation, so we deduct our cost directly. Yeah, but if the um, the amount is considered as material, so we have to uh, assign it. We have to allocate them to the working process, finish good, and the cost of good sold. Yeah, the difference is just uh, about the journal entry here. So we uh, divide the. Uh, over or under allocation to the working process finish good and the cost of good sold yeah. um, usually it is because uh, um, sorry yeah. usually it is because uh, it is material so if it is material it will influence our income 
quite uh, significant. So uh, to make our income um, not misleading, so we have to divide it into all the ending inventories. So the progression is based on the ending inventories between the working process, finished good, and cost of goods sold account. Okay, let's see now the overhead. So we can summarize that we have the cost control of uh, manufacturing overhead control, the actual overhead, or, some, or in the journal entry we put it on debit manufacturing overhead control, and uh, uh, budgeted at or man manufacturing overhead allocated. Okay, and then we uh, 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 allocate them and we assign it to the uh, working process, and after it goes to the working process control it will move to finish good and then it will uh, transform to uh, uh, cost of goods sold so uh, there is a gap here yeah, between the manufacturing overhead allocated and control if it is more uh, we allocate more than the actual overhead so we know it as a uh, over allocated but if we allocate less than what the actual overhead so we know it as under allocated yeah. so we can treat this over or under allocated based on the uh, two methods we had previously uh, right of approach or progression approach okay and the consideration uh, where to assign this uh, uh, difference is about the materiality consistency and industry practice Okay, let's see now the example or, or the case study. Uh, let's see our product is customized table, uh, which is uh, job cost job CA twenty, and we are now uh, and we are supposed to calculate the cost for, for job CA twenty. So let's see now the case. Uh, let's say the unit to produce is five units. The material A. Okay, to make uh, the unit, uh, the product is three meters square, and this material uh, costs thirty thousand per meter square. Material B, four meter square per unit, and the price is forty thousand per meter unit. Uh, direct labor hour to process this uh, product is nine uh, six hours per unit, and the rate for direct labor is twenty five thousand per hour. We estimate the manufacturing overhead for the current period is one million, one billion uh, rupiah, and we uh, uh, estimate the direct labor hour for the current period is one hundred and twenty-five uh, thousand hours. So we can then calculate the rate for the manufacturing overhead is eight thousand. This is the normal costing that we are using here. Okay, and then the actual manufacturing overhead is two hundred and twenty thousand and fifty two hundred and fifty thousand. Okay, let's now see the answer. Okay, let's now calculate the direct material cost. Direct material cost is the unit we produce multiplied by the quantity per unit and the price per meter square of the materials. So the total cost of uh, material A is four hundred and fifty, and material B is eight hundred thousand. And the total is one thousand two hundred and fifty uh, one million two hundred and fifty thousand. And for the direct labor uh, for this job, uh, for the five units we produce five hour per unit to produce and twenty five thousand um, hourly payment for the direct labor. So the total cost for the direct labor is seven hundred and fifty thousand. Okay. For the uh, for the manufacturing overhead, the first step is to calculate the rate, yeah, the budgeted rate. So manufacturing overhead rate is the total overhead for the period divided by the estimated direct labor hours. So we find uh, that uh, manufacturing overhead rate is eight thousand per direct labor hour. So now we are uh, um, assign it to the uh, job uh, CA twenty. So unit produces five, uh, six hours per unit, and the hourly rate is eight thousand. So the total cost for the manufacturing overhead is uh, two hundred and uh, forty thousand. So we can summarize that the total cost for job CA twenty is uh, this is the material one million two hundred and fifty thousand, 
direct labor 750,000 and manufacturing overhead is 240,000 so the total uh, cost for the five units of uh, job CA20 is 2,240,000 so we can then find the uh, total cost per unit is 448,000 okay so this is all for today thank you for your attention i hope that you can understand the topic and give you um, a good understanding about uh, uh, the aspects of the job costing thank you very much see you later assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh